Welcome to Kaylee Daily. Today's question is how can I help my baby learn their day from night? This is Kaylee Daily, the bi-weekly podcast about all things doula tips and tips, where we answer one question about pregnancy, labor, postpartum, or lactation in order to have your journey in this parenting world be just a little bit more informed and filled with consent. Hello, welcome back. I am Kaylee Harad, the host of this lovely podcast, and I have my very first guest with me. Well, no, that's not true. Emrys was my first guest. I can't discount her. I have my first non-family member guest today, (laughs) my (laughs) dear friend and colleague, Kim Hawley. Um, Kim is a sleep coach, an IBCLC a, a, a knowledgeable person about all sorts of responsive parenting. You're a peaceful parenting officially, right? Peaceful parenting yep. coach. Oh, peaceful oh. parenting educator. Yep. Yes. Peaceful parenting educator. She's adding to her credentials every day. Um, and Kim and I actually run a responsive parenting community together. And so we are like business besties as well. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, and so Kim is here to answer our question today because sleep is not my area of expertise. Um, so Kim, how can I help my baby learn their day from night? Oh, such a common struggle for the newborn phase in those early, early months. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the first thing that's important to know is that it is really, really normal for your baby not to know their days from nights, especially in those early, early weeks, first couple of months. Uh, And that is one of the the hard parts of newborn sleep struggles, right? That they might sleep just as much, if not more during the day. (laughs) They might have really long awake periods at night, like 11 to to 1 a.m. parties (laughs) where they're just up and they're Great. And it's like, oh my yeah. gosh, let me sleep. So happy, right? <laughs> sometimes oh. happy, sometimes not happy. Yes. Also, the I, I'm awake and angry about it. <laughs> yes. Scream yes. can also happen. Um, and that their day, their sleep is going to just be scattered here and there irregularly across the whole 24 hours. And that these are really normal because their body isn't isn't regulating their day from their night. They don't have that internal regulation. Uh, mm-hmm. They're not producing their own melatonin, which is one of our big sleep hormones yet. And so they don't have that day night difference. And so time will help us. And also we can support them to start to make that difference, that differentiation with some of the the sleep hygiene and environmental sort of social cues that we give them. Mm -hmm. So um, what would you say are some of the like most impactful things to do during the daytime, for instance, um, to help them see that it's not nighttime? <laughs> yeah. So lighting and activity are your friends yeah. here, okay. right? We want to make a really strong difference between day and night. So daytime should be light and normal household activities, regardless of whether they're awake or asleep. So naps, Mm -hmm. especially with young babies, should always be in daylight. Mm -hmm. Um, And we shouldn't walk around tiptoeing going, you know, the baby's sleeping. We have to be quiet. We don't want to be quiet. We want to just be normal. Mm -hmm. Um, So light first thing in the morning, Mm -hmm. getting up, but kind of like having your household get up at a roughly regular time, bringing in lots of light, Mm -hmm. going outside every day into the night into natural sunlight, getting fresh air, um, and having those naps be around light are really going to be helpful. Yeah. Well, and going outside every day is helpful for everybody. That's one of my big postpartum tips anyway. Yes. Yes. It's helpful for your mental health and your sleep as much as it is for babies, babies, well-being and baby sleep. Right. So, um, aside from tips that people can do, about how long age wise does it usually take for kids to make this differentiation between days and nights? Yeah. So usually we start to see a circadian rhythm, which is that day yeah. night regulation, um, emerge around three months. So your body starts making its own melatonin around two months. And then we start to see this regulation around sort of the three to four month mm-hmm. mark where they're having this. Em- 
day night difference and merge. Um, and then it's still developing some. So it's not, it's not like it's there done. We can check it off. Um, we always have yeah. to support our own circadian rhythm. Yeah. And for folks nursing, babies are getting some of that in, in human milk. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're nursing or pumping or any of that kind of combination, uh, you're getting that those hormones in human milk. So they also support that process. Mm -hmm. So then daytime stuff, if we're wanting it to be light and normal, normal noise and all of that, then what does that look like at nighttime? Let's say when a baby is having like that longer awake stretch, what, how do we, how do we make that different than the daytime stretches? Yep. So daytime is light, nighttime is dark. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we want to, you know, maybe dim the lights in our, our house around the same time each evening, even if baby sleep is really irregular. Mm -hmm. We want nighttime to be as dark as we can make it overnight so that we're creating a big contrast. Mm -hmm. And with newborns, we need light. Like most people need lights to deal with baby care, feeding, <laughs> paper changing, like you're learning it all. It's not second nature to you yeah. yet. <laughs> so my tip there is use as dim a light as you can. Uh, and that think firelight colors, yellow to orange to mm. red is less disruptive to the circadian rhythm. So okay. if you can go out and get like a red colored nightlight mm -hmm. uh, or just use a warmer, dimmer light and yeah. have it on as little as possible, then that will give you the light you need to yeah. manage your learning your baby care tasks mm -hmm. and also disrupt the circadian rhythm less. Right. And um, a follow-up question to that. So let's say you need light only when you're changing a diaper, for instance. Would you want that level of light on all the time? So there's not a big difference in like, it's really, really dark and then there's some light, which can be like, you know, jarring. Or do you only turn that light on when you're changing a diaper or need it? Great question. Only when you need it, because we okay. really want nighttime to be dark. Be dark. Uh, and so that's why if it's as dim and soft a light as you can, mm -hmm. um, that's going to be less disruptive overall. Yeah. And this is about baby developing their circadian rhythm, but yeah. also yours. So like if you had a light on all night long, that's not great for your, like your right. sleep well-being. Yeah. So we just want to turn it on when we need it and mm -hmm. then turn it off. Um, but if you want like a night light on, say in the bathroom or the hallway mm -hmm. or something like that, then, then go for like the red colored uh, yeah. night lights, because that's, that's the least disruptive. Okay. Um, and I thought of one more question for you. Um, I remember personally using my phone quite a bit at night when I was when I was up breastfeeding and whatnot. Um, how, I mean, obviously, I know that can disrupt my own circadian rhythm, you know, but also what kind of impact does that have on the baby? Is that enough light to be disruptive or is it still discreet enough to be OK? Great question. <laughs> it depends a little bit on what you're looking at and how bright, yeah. like is, is it on nighttime mode with a dark yes. background? Okay. Do you have a blue light filter on it? Mm -hmm. Those are going to minimize the negative effects, but yeah. some babies are really sensitive and just the indirect light from a TV or from a phone is enough to, mm -hmm. to be not great for their circadian rhythm. Yeah. And so we have a balance of, do you mm -hmm. need that phone to keep you awake, to keep you sane, mm -hmm. you know, versus the impact yeah. on circadian rhythm and sleep. So mm -hmm. like the best answer would be no screens at night for you and for baby. Right. You know, if we're just looking at sleep and sleep hygiene. Right. But sometimes it's more complicated and complex yeah. than that. So if you yeah. are going to look at it, then definitely set yourself up with like the blue light filters and the nighttime mode and all that kind of stuff yeah. so that it's less problematic. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we, um, I'm really excited that you are with us and I know this is short and sweet. This is how we do things over here at Kaylee Daily. Um, Kim's sleep class is the class that I mentioned in the last episode that was in the show notes. So if you've looked at that class, this is Kim Holly who will be teaching you that lovely class. Um, and, and like I mentioned, she and I run a responsive parenting group together. So I will link um, Kim's, uh, Instagram and everything in the show notes, but Kim, if somebody is having some sleep issues and wanting some sleep help, how, what is the best way for people to reach out to you and work with you? Uh, through my website, 
So um, I offer free intro calls for folks mm -hmm. wanting one-on-one -on -one sleep coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course I have sleep classes that you can yeah. do that I do in partnership with the Breastfeeding Center of Washington, DC, which is not actually its official name, is it? It's the Great Breastfeeding Center of Greater Washington. Um, <laughs> and those are the yeah. two main ways at the moment. Okay. Perfect. And um, that sleep class is virtual. So you don't have to be in DC to take that class, um, which is part of why I linked it in the last episode. Um, but I will make sure that all of Kim's info is here in the show notes so that you can um, connect with her. Kim, thank you so much for being here. I enjoy working with you. And I know that my people will enjoy your expertise. Thanks for having me. Of course. All right. We will see you all in the next episode. Edited and produced by Kaylee Harad, as I'm sure you can probably tell. And um, our amazing music is credited in the show notes as well. So we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. And in the meantime, have wonderful and consent-filled births.